Good morning, Code Beauty. It's RJ back with another video, so let's get to it. These random Mike Schmidt item of the day, a couple items actually. Um, being a Mike Schmidt super collector that I claim to be, uh, it is my goal to collect everything I can featuring Mike Schmidt on it. So to that end, I've got, you know, balls, bobbles, books. I've got single sets and uh, star cards, everything you could imagine uh, featuring Mr. Schmidt. Uh, one of the things most super collectors also try to do is get magazine covers of their favorite player. And in the world of sport, Sports Illustrated is widely regarded as the Bible back in the day. It's come on harder times recently, but uh, back in the, uh, starting in 1954, I think it was 54 was its first issue, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Sports Illustrated was all that and a bag of chips. So here is from May 3rd, 1976, Mike Schmidt on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Price tag $1. Have another one. This is the... Um, there is one, actually, I, I should say, I'm acquiring, don't have it yet. When I started to do this video, I looked up how many times Mike was on the cover, and I realized I do not have one from um, October of uh, 1980 during the World Series. It has Mike uh, in a batting stance up at the plate. Catcher Daryl Porter of the uh, Royals is behind the plate and the umpire behind that. It's a look at his batting stance. And the camera is focused kind of down the third base line. So that's the angle. If you see that image, that's the one I did not have in my collection, but I am trying to acquire. But I do have this one. The baseball preview episode from 1981 was this one. Hot shots at the hot corner. The two MVPs from 1980, Mike and George Brett, shared the cover in the preview magazine. Interestingly, 80 was the strike year, so when they finally got back to playing, very smartly, very, very smartly, Sports Illustrated did this. Reprinted the same cover. Here we go again. Baseball issue continued. Very uh, intelligent part on Sports Illustrated back when they uh, were doing good. <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. And the last time he appeared on the cover that I'm aware of was a uh, issue from 1985 talking about how salaries were getting a little high. And he had just signed, I don't know if he just signed an extension that year, but he was the top of the heap uh, starting the 1985 season. Uh, if you remember, I uh, did a trivia question a while back, who was the first million dollar player? And it was Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan's contract was still paying him a million a year, but it was several years after he signed that deal. By that time, salaries had doubled. <laughs> Tells you how um, salaries, even back in this day, were just skyrocketing above what people believed. So those are my random Mike Schmidt item of the day. My random baseball item of the day. If you recall, I showed off on Monday... Uh, 2005 card showing two prospects uh, from the Phillies, Ryan Howard and Cole Hamels, who were big parts of our, ninth, or to our 2008 World Series team. Uh, the little-known and long-forgotten member of the 2008 World Series roster was So Taguchi. This is his, you know, let me show you what the back, this is a Major League Showdown sports card game. This is a 2003 card. He was on the Cardinals for most of his career. Um, you know, slick, d decent fielder, you know, pinch hitter role kind of a player. Never was anything like Ichiro or anything like that, but he, he was a good stick, good field kind of a guy, but certainly not like a perennial all-star or anything. But I I was a fan when they got him as a pinch in a, in a pinch role. I thought he was a good addition to the team. When they went to the World Series and he was in a, uh, he was a pinch hitter, he was like, he never got into any game. They never used him in a pitch hitting role. They never used him as a late inning defensive replacement. They always put um, Jeff Bruntlett out in left field to replace um, 
uh, Pat Burrell late in the game. I don't know why they didn't use uh, Taguchi. Poor guy was on the bench for every game of that World Series, or only five games, but never got a shot to show what he could do. I felt bad for him. You know, he still got a ring. He was still on the team. He still got the money. But I feel bad <laughs> for him still to this day that he never got to play in that World Series. So, but this is So Taguchi, my random baseball item of the day, his 2003 MLB Showdown card. All right, today's trivia question. Um, <clears throat> Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs in 1927. Very famous statistic, very famous year. <clears throat> of those 60 home runs, there is a uh, member of the football Hall of Fame, who was a pitcher at this time in the major leagues and was responsible for pitching two of Babe Ruth's 60 home runs back in 1927. So, your question, name that pitcher and former NFL Hall of Fame member. What future uh, NFL Hall of Fame member once served up two of Babe Ruth's 60 home runs during the 1927 season. Um, send me an email with that answer. I will include my email in the description below. What you are playing for are, I think, two cool cards. Gary Sheffield, who uh, questionable whether he'll make the Hall of Fame or not. This is his 1993 Hostess baseball card. Member of the 500 Home Run Club. And <clears throat> I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. The other one, Dave Parker. Another guy who should be in the Hall of Fame. This is from, I believe, from 1980, 1986. His Quaker Oats card showed him as a member of the Cincinnati Reds. Dave Parker. Quaker Chewy, Chewy Granola Bars from 1986. Two awesome cards of two... Very good players, uh, borderline Hall of Fame players there. That's what you're going to get if you answer that question. Again, send me an email. I'll include my email in the along with the question. We'll pick a winner on Sunday. All right, good luck to everybody on that. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to turn the camera around uh, because today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Sports Card Hall of Fame or the Baseball Card Hall of Fame voting. Hang on one second. Okay, we're back. So, um, Ray from Philly, if you know the channel, uh, you'll know Ray. and You understand the baseball card Hall of Fame voting system. If you don't, I'm going to include a link in the description below detailing, uh, providing you a link to Ray's announcement of this year's baseball card Hall of Fame voting, which is open now. It's been open since uh, last Monday, I believe. Uh, either way, look up the video, get on board. Basically, back in 2018, Ray started his own on his own, creating what he considered the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. Uh, almost every year, he would put in 10 cards, what he considered legendary cards. And he started by just randomly asking people who watched his video to send in uh, as many cards as they want, and he would just tally the votes himself. Then a couple of years ago, he tagged up, teamed up with a couple of his uh, YouTube buddies, um, Mike, this baseball card life, and Victor, the rookie card specialist. They are now assisting him with this, and they actually have a real high-quality voting process. So every year, uh, in the springtime, they will put out a list of 40 cards. Now, they select the nominees. That's their choice. Um, and the way they do it, I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of the background, but I, you know, definitely go and take a look on your own and I'm, I'm going to vote my sec myself in a second and you can s follow along as I vote, but the top 10 votes, so in other words, he has a, uh, some kind of calculator, some kind of way for you can to click on a button and vote and then send in your vote and he'll, they tabulate the votes <coughs> for the 40 different cards. The top 10 get enshrined into what he calls the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. The bottom five fall out, 
the remaining 25 are held over till next year. And then they add 15 new cards as possible entries. And he's been doing this for a couple of years now with this method. I love it. It's fantastic. It's gotten endorsements from all kinds of YouTubers. In fact, uh, Dr. James Beckett uh, has participated in Ray's voting. So it really is becoming the standard for what is called a baseball card hall of fame. It's not like it was endorsed by tops or <clears throat> the national baseball hall of fame or anything. It's just Ray doing it and people more and more tuning into Ray as a uh, source Ray's Ray's list as the go-to tabulation for uh, what we consider a baseball card hall of fame. So um, I'm going to vote. We're going to go through the ballot with you, let you see all the cards that are up for enshrinement this year. Uh, we're only allowed to pick 10, so I'll go through the list of 40 with you, uh, pick my 10, tell you why I'm going to pick these, not some of the others, and uh, hopefully you enjoy this, and hopefully it inspires you in your own time, in your own, when you have time, you know, when you're able to vote as well, because that's the whole point of this. Let's get a lot of people uh, supporting Ray. He is into the hundreds uh, with people who are playing along or, or, or voting. So I hope you can add your name to that list. All right. So hang on a second. I'm going to turn the camera back around and we'll go through the ballot together. Hang on a second. All right. I have gone to Ray's channel. I just want to show you this. This is the latest video he had done. It's the uh, seventh annual uh, Hall, Baseball Card Hall of Fame, 7th Annual 2024 voting begins now. And in the description below, there's a link. He has a link to the ballot, but he also has a link to all the cards that were already inducted. So you can see both. Just want to point that out to you. I'm going to include both of these links in the description below. Hopefully you'll be able to navigate to them. So here is the ballot. I'm going to click right over there to the ballot again. There are 40 cards. Ray and his friends have chosen these 40 cards to be on this ballot. We have no say. They're doing it. Their choice. Their decision. Um, definitely, before you complain because this or that card isn't on the ballot, take a look at the list of previous electees because perhaps one of the ones you would love is already on that list. Okay, so... Do consider checking out the list before you begin to critique how come your favorite card isn't on there. I will say I'm very thrilled because last year the Mike Schmidt rookie card made the Hall of Fame. Woot woot. Me and Ray are both ecstatic about that, so I don't have to worry about that one anymore. But I'm going to go through all 40 cards here, uh, tell you why or what I am, why I'm, why I'm, why I am or am not going to vote for them. Now I haven't done. My research yet? I haven't. I've seen Ray's video, so I know who's on here. I kind of have a, a an inkling in my mind who I am going to vote for, but I haven't determined if it's going to be ten yet. I want to make sure I vote for ten, but no more than ten. And I don't know if when I go through the ones I know I'm going to select, I'll have time for more. But let's go through them. So uh, the first one, 1887 Old Judge Kid Nichols. Now. I believe there are better 1800s era cards than this one. Um, I can't recall what's been elected before. The ones that come to mind for me mostly are the, like the Cap Anson Goodwin champion card and some of the uh, Allen and Ginter white uh, cards of that era, more so than the old judges. But I don't know if they've already been elected. And I don't know if I can have, you know, if, if I need my, one of my 10 for somebody other than this one. I'm going to pass on that. Uh, 1909, Walter Johnson, yellow portrait. Good card, strong possibility, but don't know if I want to spend one of my 10 on this one. All right, E95, Honus Wagner. This is a card that I do not have yet, but I am saving up for. It is a ton of money. I won't say how much because my wife might see this and kill me. But uh, I am I am on my way to collecting the entire E95 Caramel set. Um, there are only 25 cards in that set. I have over half of them now. Um, in the next two years, I will have all but one. 
the one I will be missing is this one. So hopefully I will eventually have this and be lovely if it's in the Hall of Fame, but I'm not going to vote for it. Uh, I don't want to say it doesn't deserve it, but Wagner, the T206, obviously is already on here in, in the Hall of Fame, and I don't know if this warrants a spot. 1909 Ramley is one I have voted for every year, but I'm going to skip it for now and come back to it if I think I have more votes allowed. Then you get into all these other T206s. There's a bunch of T206s. I don't think we need to have one T206 of every Hall of Famer in the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. I'm going to skip both of those. This one, though, is a no-brainer for me. The 1909 the T206 Sherry McGee error card. I've been advocating for this for many, many years since Ray started that. I think the T206 Sherry McGee error is one of those cards that is iconic in the hobby. Demands a vote. That's my vote for that card. Um, Cracker Jack Mathewson. Eh, you know, Ty Cobb and Joe Jackson are more iconic than that one. I'm going to pass. The 1925 Exhibit Lou Gehrig rookie card. Bam. This is, I believe, an iconic card. The exhibits don't get a lot of love um, because they're just black and white stock photos, uh, oversized cards, and they just don't get a lot of hobby love because of that. But this Gehrig is an iconic card in every respect. I don't think, without a doubt, this should not be in the, should, should, should be left out of the Hall of Fame. It has to be in there. That's going to get my vote. Uh, if you listen to Ray... The 1932 Yes Carmel Rogers Hornsby was added because he didn't have a Rogers Hornsby card, and he thought to himself this was probably the best or most attractive or most iconic Hornsby card. Hornsby played in those bleak collector years of the late 18 teens or the late 19 teens into the uh, mid 1930s when you didn't get a lot of cards being manufactured of good quality. It just junk cards all over the place. So. Hornsby doesn't have a lot of iconic cards simply because they didn't make a lot of great cards when he was playing. You get into a whole bunch of um, Gowdies, Big League Chew and Gowdies, some different players, Jimmy, Jimmy Fox, Dizzy Dean, Hank Greenberg. All likely good candidates, especially the Dizzy Dean. That's an iconic card of Dizzy. Uh, but the others, I'm going to save and see what my votes are. 1941 Play Ball, Ted Williams. I, I can see it, but I'm going to hold off on that. All right. The Satchel Page, Campanella. There's other cards I like better. Satchel already has a couple in there. I don't know about Roy Campanella, but I'm going to pass on those. The Warren Spawn rookie card. One of the things I am try not to do every time I vote on this is pick a guy's rookie card simply because it is a Hall of Famer's rookie card, and we want all Hall of Famer rookie cards in the, in the Hall of Fame of baseball cards. I'm trying not to do that. That's why I pass over a whole lot of those cards for that reason. The 1950 Josh Gibson. This is a hard one to say no to, but I'm going to put this on the back burner. If I have any votes left over, this is the first one I'll come to. It is the earliest Josh Gibson card I think anybody's aware of. Uh, certainly he had died by this time, 1950, but it is uh, probably the earliest Josh Gibson card ever created. So that's one of the reasons it gets a good look from me. But again, I think I'll wait. <clears throat> a couple of interesting ones. 1952 Andy Pafko. 1952 top Andy Pafko. Card number one. This is an iconic card because it is card number one in arguably one of the greatest card sets of all time. Or should I say one of the most popular card sets of all time. I You know, great is subjective, but it's certainly one of the most popular cards of all time and being number one it is very condition sensitive so it, be, it has become a legendary in status simply because it is card number one of the 1952 top set and i think it warrants a look the 53 mantle uh, i'm not going to vote for that right now one of the raised qualifi qualifiers on the hall of fame entry is that you can ha no, you cannot have any more no one person can have more than five entries into the Hall of Fame. In other words, Mickey Mantle. You, Mickey Mantle's one of those players, and there's any number of other players you could say this about. They have thousands of cards that, if you're a super collector of Mickey Mantle, you would say likely qualify for inclusion in any baseball ha card Hall of Fame because it's Mickey Mantle and it's this rare card. The problem with Ray 
no, no, that's the problem, I should say. Ray, to his credit, realized you didn't want a Hall of Fame of just one player. It's too many, you know, Maze cards, too many Aaron cards, too many Mantle cards. You didn't want that. So he limited the enshrinement to five. Mantle already has four cards in the Baseball Card Hall of Fame. So I'm going to skip that one for now. The Wilson's Frank, 1945, the 1940, no, no, the 1954 Wilson Franks, Ted Williams. I've been advocating for this one for years. It's one of those iconic Ted Williams cards. I love it, love it, love it. And I vote for it every year. I will vote for it again. Uh, I'm going to sh shy away from the Brooks Robinson and the Roger Maris because of the same reason I said I didn't want to vote for any of the other, like the Warren Spahn one. I just don't want to pick a card because it's some Hall of Famer's rookie card. This was a great choice by Ray to add this. The 1959 Menko uh, Duyusha Sadahara O card. This is generally considered Sadahara O's most desirable early card. I think it was it's just fantastic. And not, not only is he including the Eagle Leaguers, but he's including cards of foreign players as well. And to have a Sadahara O card make the Hall of Fame is a no-doubter in my mind. We have to do it. So he gets that vote for that card. I'm skipping all of these cards for that re for the for the same rookie reason. I am going to give a nod. You know, I'm going to pass on this one right here. I don't know how many I'm up to. And I don't know, don't know where I'm going to end when I get to the end. But I'm going to skip this one. But even, even in front of the Josh Gibson, if I have room at the end, the 3D Roberto Clemente, I'm going after. I'm going to skip Robin Yount for that reason. The orange, the 1980 Charlotte O's, the orange Cal Ripken is incredibly iconic. Cal is one of the greatest heroes of baseball, love him or hate him, he's fantastic, and the orange card has this mystique about it, this minor league orange card has a huge mystique about it, and deserves to be in the Baseball Card Hall of Fame, skipping over all of these other cards that are just rookie cards, this one here, the Reggie Jackson autograph from 1980, 1990, upper deck high numbers, iconic legendary, I mean, hobby-shattering, you know, card, this one. The first Chase card ever included in a hobby product. Find the Reggie was insane. All of these cards from all of the baseball heroes that came after it, Reggie are still, you know, $1,000 cards, even though the autograph of the player and any other thing might be, you know, $75. These have a huge premium because of what they represent. The first chase card ever in the hobby. It has to be in the Hall of Fame. It has to be. Um, going down here. Doo, 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 doo. The Topps Desert Shield. It's just a rookie card, like every other rookie card, but it's got a little bit more to it than that because of the Desert Shield moniker. But I'm going to skip it right now. All right. Love the Mariano, but... The Jordan, I'm I'm all over the Jordan. This is one of those little known, not little known, but one of those cards that's just mediocre in value. It really can be had for ten bucks. It's a common card. I mean, it's not a common. It's a short print. It was the first SP uh, upper deck starting in 1991 and ending in 1993. Made six cards: SP one and SP two. Three, four, five, six. One in the base release, and then one in the high number release for three consecutive years. There's only six SP cards. Jordan was the first, and it was it was one of those cards that fascinated everybody to have a card of Michael Jordan, this basketball legend, in a Chicago White Sox uniform. It just really caught collectors off guard. That's why I think it deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It really is one of those... Again, it's an iconic card. Uh, and then lastly, you have the uh, combined 2001 Topps Chrome update or traded card featuring Ichiro and Pujols on the same card. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go back and count. I think I have a couple more spaces. But the ones I picked had to be picked in my mind. 
you could not go past them and say no to those cards. That's my opinion. So I got one there with the McGee, two with the Gary exhibit. So so, go for, so far I got two, three with the Pafco, four with the Williams, five with the O, five so far, six with the orange, seven with the Reggie, eight. So I got two more spots. So I got two more spots and I've already said what I would do. I'm going to go back to the 68 tops, 3D Roberto Clemente. I think Roberto is such a legend. And this test issue by Tops of the 3D or the lenticular version back in 68 is one of those iconic cards because it's so rare, so desirable of such an awesome player. That's my ninth pick. And again, as I said, I would. I'm going back to the Josh Gibson, uh, the earliest card of Josh Gibson known to have been produced. I think that's the kind of card you want to put in your Hall of Fame to honor such a great Negro League player as Josh Gibson. So those are my 10. I'm going to go back one more time with you. I skipped I skipped the Ramley this year. I always did the Ramley, but I skipped it this year. So number one is the Sherry McGee error. I've been advocating for that for a long time. It belongs in the Hall of Fame. That's number one. Number two, the Lou Gehrig exhibit card from 1925. That's number two. Number three is the Josh Gibson from 1953, Teleritos. I imagine that's a Latin American release. Was that three? Yeah, one, two, three. Four is the Pafco. Five is the Wilson Franks Williams. Six is the Sadahara O. Seven is your 3D Clemente. Eight is your Charlotte O's. Uh, Cal Ripken, nine is your Reggie, 10 is your Jordan. So those are the 10 I have. There are, in my estimation, several other cards that I see in front of me that are deserving of, enshri of enshrinement. But these other cards I've selected, I believe, are deserving before the others. That's my opinion. I trust that you I all have your own opinion and that you will do this vote all yourself, all right? So, everybody is voted on. I come down here, I click Submit, bam. And look, your response has been recorded. Let's, let's take a look, let's view score. It is, I'm filming this, like you're watching this on Friday. I'm filming this on the Saturday prior. So, uh, it is April 20th where I sit. Is April 26th as you are viewing it. So back on April 20, April 20th, what was the score? Let's see what we got. What happened? I hit view score. I got nothing. Oh, it's just showing me what I did. Oh, I thought it was going to tell me. Uh, oh, well, I thought it was going to tell me what the count is. <laughs> no biggie. I, I recorded my vote. It's in. I'm happy to have done it. So let me click all this stuff out. Uh, pause. And let's get back. I'll come back and wrap up for you. It's been a long video, but hang on with me just a little bit longer, okay? So there you go. That is my Hall of Fame, my, my 2024 Baseball Card Hall of Fame voting. I hope you enjoyed that please consider doing it your, on your own. Again, take a look in the description below. I'm going to link to the Ray's video about the rules and how to do it, which has a link to the ballot, but I'll include the link to the ballot myself. And his video also has a link to the existing enshrinement class, everybody who's already in the Hall of Fame, so you can see what cards are already there, all right? So by all means, please do this. Uh, and from my own personal viewing, thanks for watching. Uh, come back on Sunday. We will have the trivia recap. I uh, hope to see you all there and participating. I uh, hope you enjoy my content. If it did, please consider like, subscribe, commenting, and all that jazz. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.